Good morning everybody. It seems that uh, something's happening. Seems uh, a lot better than before. So thank you. Sorry for holding you back. I know we're a bit late, but things happen and I'd rather uh, restart. I've learned my lesson than to continue with a broken system. So there we go. Uh, welcome each and every one of you. And I hope you're going to enjoy the flight with me. We're going to fly from Zanzibar, a little island here off the coast of Africa. And we're going to go to Nairobi. So, um, the links to the scenery is in the description below the stream. And it's all freeware. So you are welcome to go grab your own copies, even when you have the time. Yep, computers, what can we say? Sometimes you just want to get rid of them, eh? But anyway, we can't live without them. So, just to show you while we, we've just put it in. Uh, this scenery was made by a chappy by the name of Fritz Bayer. Uh, I've actually spoken to him quite a few times in my life. Very, very nice guy. Uh, he... Uh, used to make a lot of scenery for FSXP3D and I was quite happy this morning. I had a different scenery for Zanzibar, completely different scenery, but it kept on giving errors, kept on giving errors and, and then I had to obviously find something else and then I saw, oh my goodness, he's got one. And I grabbed it and I've given you the link, you're welcome to get it. It's a, a nice island holiday resort for us South Africans, a nice place to escape to, it's uh, right next to Tanzania um, and then uh, Mount Kilimanjaro is going to be on our left according to the flight path so that's the tallest mountain in Africa I think that's just over 10,000 feet or something that you can actually hike up to a point there and uh, yeah well I'm not much of a Geography friendly, but we'll see what we see and uh, then I quickly made the ortho as well. So that's something I made myself I made a note about that And there we go. We can actually get going and do whatever we need to do now Guys, I hope you had a good week and a good weekend so far in South Africa. We've got a long weekend. So uh, we had the day off yesterday and we're going to have the day off on Monday as well, uh, all for uh, the Passover and I hope you guys also you know, had a good um, uh, Passover uh, a weekend as well. So I am going to try and fly a little bit more than usual but no promises, hope we can fit in a few few flights. Right, I'm just quickly setting up my Navigraph in the background here. As always, guys, feel free to chat with me. Leave your comments. Let's see how much we can uh, enjoy the flight together that way as well. Martin, the scenery is incredible, but it was designed very badly. Um, I actually left comments on the comment section of uh, that page where we downloaded from. It's really, it's a terrible design. Um, I've had to bump up my sliders to unacceptably high levels just to see the scenery. So um, I've, I've requested that they actually fix that. So. Uh, we'll see what happens because uh, I mean it was funny some guys have the terminal some guys don't have the terminal Anyway, we f we figured it out. It's just uh, the way you designed that you need to have an incredible amount of um, Scenery loaded before it will show up so kind of ridiculous in my opinion anyway 
but you'll see it for those guys who haven't looked at the link yet it is it is really stunning and with the ortho that i made with it it really it looks amazing this is the best nairobi scenery i've ever seen okay so after all the complaining i, I must be honest it's the best in all the simulators i haven't seen anything like this Right, so this is what I made in the background quickly just to show you guys. I did not have a chance to, to actually make this in Navigraph before now. So that is where we are at now. Uh, we are going to take off and literally turn around, go back northwest. And that is Nairobi over there. It's apparently a one hour, 20 minute flight. Something like that. So we're not going to go too high. We're going to stick to flight level 320. Yeah, one has to give credit where credit is due. We can complain, but um, you have to be fair, I believe. You know, it's no use in just complaining. I see it with Zebo. Man, the guys also complain, but there's not a lot of fairness, so I, I want to be fair. It is incredible. I love the scenery, so, yeah. Well, I was lucky, or I am lucky, my aerostats just brought me some coffee, so uh, I didn't have to worry about that either today. Let's have a look, see where we're at. Alright, we can call our ground services. Okay, just to show you guys quickly uh, what I'm also looking at here. That's my PFPX. I was looking at my takeoff weight, my uh, fuel and my payload and that gives us 65.1 on the takeoff weight, which is perfect. Uh, during the week, I spend a lot of time just verifying, you know, all the settings I had in PFPX. We've been getting conflicting reports from people saying it's not right. It's, I, can't I can't find a fault. Um, I think there is a problem between the conversion from pounds to kilograms, very definitely. Um, but all in all, from what I have here, and if you guys go to my private hangar in the link below the video, and you, you go find the PFPX stuff in there, it's it's all as per Twixter. This is what he gave me, and this is what's working, and it all balances. Uh, every now and then, there's like a rounding issue, where you might have 100 kilograms up or down, out, that's not completely balanced. But it's a rounding issue. It's not. It's not a calculation issue. You know, there's there's a certain amount of rounding that both of the programs, PFPX and uh, the Zebo tablet, does. You know, that sometimes just misses maybe 100 kilograms, and then you just adjust it. But I would say 98% of the time, it's 100% spot on. So I'm happy with that. Alright, 
I'm going to use my electrical hydraulics uh, just to make sure that we don't have any disconnects. Uh, I had one again in the week, first one in a long time where all the ground crew just disappeared and I realized, oops, uh, it's like the parking brake goes off, but it doesn't really, it's just something they perceive. So the way to counter it usually is just to enable that. I'm just going to do that. Alright, then nav lights are on, emergency lights are on, which means that the rest of society can actually come and join us on board now. Alright, uh, for the streaming purposes and for training purposes, I've changed my speed at which my IRS is aligning down to one minute again. Uh, there's just too many things I want to talk about or do at certain times, you know, for certain reasons and then this thing isn't aligned, so I've just gone back to that. And then we can look at our, our lighting. Uh, Martin, I, at this point in time, because of Twixter's involvement in this, I've got like this loyalty issue uh, towards him and PFPX and myself having worked on it now. So um, I only use it at this point in time. Um, I actually checked my sim brief this morning that it is also in line with what we have to have then in terms of our aircraft configuration. Uh, so it is in the background. I can use it and I will use it again. Um, I can't use PFPX for all my aircraft like flight factors A320. Uh, you can't export from PFPX, so I'd rather do that in some brief. So there are reasons why and why not. I hope that answers your question. Um, one of the funny things that I have noticed uh, through somebody on uh, uh, the Zebo community group, I think it was in the week, actually pointed something out to me that. Uh, when you do a flight export from Simbrief, they actually export the airways as well. So you've got your waypoint airway coordinate. Uh, in PFBX, when you export, there's no airways that's getting exported. So I actually was still thinking I need to go to the forum and ask the guys, why are you doing that? Because that could also create a problem for the Zebo either way, you know. And while we were looking at this heading triple zero error and doing all the tests, um, it came out, you know, that that's the difference between PFBX and Simbrief. And we st I still don't know what the significance is in terms of exporting and importing the flight plan. Obviously, it's going to fly to the right uh, waypoint, um, but the airway could be significant in how the FMC actually interprets uh, the flight plan. So that is something in the future that I'm going to have to look at as well. So uh, that's just a, an interesting point I thought I'd share with you guys quickly. So for our purposes today, I'm going to use uh, the elapsed time uh, timer, so we don't forget about that. And I suppose we can actually start the flight late now, get some people on board now. Uh, Yoki, a lot of people have reported that problem. Uh, what I would suggest is look at your log.txt file in your explain route, see if you find any errors, and then go to your um, event viewer in Windows. I don't know what you have in, in, in the Mac facilities, but you're going to have to find a log somewhere that tells you what it is that is failing. Uh, we've had a lot of ntdll.dll errors with NVIDIA. We have had uh, guys complaining about the Librain library crashing out, you know, this new SKI uh, Skisselkov rain effects that's bombing out. So, I don't know, it's 
it's like a, a pack of chocolates at this point in time, depends on which one you take. Got to export the file before I uh, loaded the Zebo, so let's just try again. Alright, that is a good question. Let's check the weather. Uh, zero, zero at six. Oh, that's almost a crosswind. Uh, we'll take one eight. Why not? Uh, Martin, yeah, um, I'm glad you guys, uh, it, well, I'm talking now in general in terms of the community. I see there's a lot of guys getting clever, you know, learning things, you know, expanding uh, their knowledge. It's so cool to see how people develop over time. Eh? So I'm not sure exactly what you uh, answered there because I was obviously rambling a lot, but um, yeah. Uh, it, Anything that you can learn, I learn every day. It's just so nice. Activate. We're gonna take 18, that is true. Then we're going to see what's the plan, say. 06, we'll take ILS 06. Let's have a look at the charts for a change. Get those Navigrive. Ooh, oh Yoki, that's gonna that's gonna change your life quite a bit. Eh? It's gonna take you a few minutes to get used to, but once you you do that, it's gonna be awesome. So we just wait for the downloads. Let's first look at the star. Let's see what are we supposed to look at. Gabs at two. Papa. That's the one. Looking at ILS. Well, let's see. Six, we won't worry about the rest then. Gaps to Papa. And let's quickly see. To hmm. Bravo. I'm not sure which one it's going to come in on. Hmm. Let's go for. Uh, to Bravo. 
then we can change it if that is not correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Get some riders. Right. Let's step through this baby. Love the curves, just love the curves. All right. At least, let's at least welcome the people. Ladies and gentlemen, for the flight deck, welcome aboard our flight today. We're wrapping up the final paperwork here. Should get you on your way momentarily. I want to thank you so much for your company and business. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Again, welcome aboard. Sixty-five point one. I'm just quickly verifying it with our BFBX. That's correct. All right. So. The trip will use 3.1 tons. Our reserves will be 1.1. I see there was a bit of a discussion yesterday about the reserves on uh, the Zebo community group. And um, I think it's uh, like one of the guys said, that it's a matter of interpretation, it's a matter of SOP. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of, you know, how you want to play the game. At the end of the day, the rules are very simple your reserves should give you 30 minutes at 1500 foot above ground level at your alternate that's what the rule says that's the ikea minimum so if you want to add your alternate in there good luck to you if you want to just play it according to the rules good luck to you as well there's no right and wrong guys just as a matter of interest so we don't have any fist fights it's really you know, open for SOPs and interpretation, so that's just that. Nice to fly in warmer weather again, man. The last couple of days I've been flying in cold weather. Right, because of the runway length, I'm also going to do a flaps 10 uh, takeoff. I don't want to come short at the end there. Right, I'm not going to do all the advanced stuff, so this is good enough for now. We said three two zero. Right, so it looks like we're going to be doing a heading select take off. I uh, vector ourselves into position and uh, then go back to L nav. Wow, this trim is low. Unheard of low. 
That's strange. Alright, we'll see how far we get with that. Adjust vertical speed. Adjust. Climb. Climb now. Climb. Climb now. Climb. Crossing. Climb. Uh, climb Martin, crossing, I'm climb, not entirely climb, sure if it climb, is 100% simulated descend, yet, but as far as descend, I understand, it descend, will be if it's crossing, not. Descend. Um, descend, it does ma crossing, it make in the real world descend, obviously a, a difference now. in all the calculations. Descend, so um, I think increase, for me personally, it's about increase, simulating climb, the real thing, increase, you know, simulating descend, properly. Increase, so um, that's also one of the reasons speed, why, in an event like this, I don't feel like doing it. So I'm just skipping it. Crossing, you know, there's no point in us doing it. Now it's not the training speed, flight. Um, test, but it, it will make a difference at some point in time, I'm sure. Relatively sure, at least. What I have noticed, by the way, is the winds seem to make a notice. When you're coming down on VNAV, uh, you know, descending to your destination, and you don't put the winds in, that seems to have a, a slight but still a, a bit of an influence. So, um, I actually, uh, when I speak to one of the uh, guys again, I'll ask them, you know, to what extent it has been modeled. Remember this whole work in progress thing? It's still going to take a while, eh? and they, there's a lot of plans I've heard of that the guys want to implement and how far they want to go. It's actually brilliant. It's, it's very nice. Our landing elevation 5330. Almost as high as Joburg. Right, so we've rounded that off a little bit, and now we can do our little pushback. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Right, let's just quickly check everything in place and then we can actually do that. PS running, we've got some volts and amps there. Wind's fine. Down the cockpit, tow is driving up. Oops. Okay, okay. 
got to open the doors. <laughs> Only human, what can I say? Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Flight attendants prepare for departure, cross check, and all call, thank you. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Right, like I said, flaps 10, so I'm concentrating on that, making sure that will be in place. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. Right, so we have flaps 10 and we have a green light at the top, so we're all happy. Let's do our control check. But so there is no ground radar at this airport as far as I know, so I'm not going to use the uh, decals right now, we'll use that when we get to the actual runway. Let's just now see how accurate this has been modeled. Okay, so we can... Mm, 
that's in a tight squeeze. All right, so we'll have to turn somewhere there. Otherwise, I'll be disconnected and bypass building. bin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Thank you, young lady. We're going to try our best. Thank you for the pin and we can go. Guys, I hope you're ready. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Approaching one eight. Yeah, you guys must not wait for me. I, I like the discussions and stuff that happens behind the scenes. Obviously, my hands are full and I'm busy uh, doing what I need to do. But you guys On must enjoy the Three, chat six, and. Uh, one. Obviously you can leave messages and I'll respond to them later. I see Cloudy Box has sent me a message that he is on Discord and I can chat with him just now as well. See if he's got any news for us regarding the rest of the development of the Zebo. If he's willing to say something, that's another story. So I'll see what I can do to raise him just now. I actually fell asleep last night watching him uh, model this air starter for us. Um, I spent a lot of time with him yesterday watching and man that thing looks good. Uh, it really really looks good and he's putting in so many hours. But this morning half past midnight I just couldn't uh, you know, keep my eyes open anymore. So I drifted away. Those of you guys that don't know, I haven't um, put two and two together yet. Uh, if you look on the Facebook page, the Zebo community group, there is a developer guy by the name of Nada Yemizwak. That is Cloudy Box, guys. That's the man himself. So uh, just to let you guys know who that is. So, let's go to flat 
Caps 5 and get down and off and... 1,000. Nice to climb. Yeah, yeah, fortunately the logic is there to assist me. I should have just kept that uh, flaps up, well, flaps out a little bit longer. Let's quickly turn a little bit. There's our transition. There we go, into the flaps 5 band. Guys, as a matter of interest, um, me and John were talking in the week. I don't know how many of you guys know this. This is your flaps markers over there, these guys. So, that region will be flaps 5 when we get to the 1 we need to go to flaps 1 um, you see there's flaps 1 and then obviously when we go past up it needs to be up flaps up so uh, Martin I'll show you just now uh, in actual fact you know what you need to do is um, go into my private hangar below the video and just look at my setup over there uh, in the Zebo folder. So go into the private hangar, into my uh, OneDrive, find the Explain 11 and then the Zebo um, folder. If there isn't a JPEG there, let me actually have a look quick. Okay, but then I'll put one there. Otherwise, if you read the Zebo installation manual that I wrote, it's in there as well. It's in the manual. So give me a second. Let's quickly double check everything I've just said. Zebo is the, the well the Zebo the install guide is there definitely so you can see it there uh, then you can see the tablet settings all my tablet settings are there because remember you need to calibrate it in the tablet as well uh, let's see let me just go up there. G. I don't have my sensitivities in there so let's quickly put it in there but like I said it's in the install guide even so, let's do this quickly. Uh, joystick. All right. First of all, what what I I need you guys to to also do really just to keep sane um, is to have a profile for the Zebo. I've got a profile for each of the Zebos anyway. You know, dif difference uh, these differences between the models. So I create my active profile. Let call it Zebo. Make sure it's active. Then what I do is go to controller sensitivities. The controller response on the left hand side, as per the manual that I've put in here, this is entirely up to you. This is your joystick we're talking about. Okay, so you can set that wherever you feel comfortable. Stability augmentation needs to be off. The moment you touch these sliders, you're messing with Zebo's code. You are augmenting the aircraft file, the ACF file, and you don't want to do that, so that needs to be off. In terms of the response curves, everything is default. I did not change anything. The only aircraft where I did change any response curves in so far has been the Jar Design A320 because without changing the response curves, you can't land the thing. You know, so that's in a nutshell. But grab, grab the installation manual for the Zebo. It's imperative that you guys set this thing up properly anyway. So please grab it, read through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the legs page. I'm going to select that one, execute it, and then go to LNAV. That should be fine then. Yeah, thanks John and thanks Martin. Today, we all have to talk 
Right guys, I'm just quickly going to um, mute uh, my audio here so I can just quickly have a chat with Cloudybox and I'll be back shortly. Uh, we're going to keep it on text for now until I come back so please feel free to just continue chatting with me on text time. Eh?
how it's going to go.
Uh, good morning, George. No, I've not uh, lost my voice at all. I'm actually busy speaking with Cloudybox in the background. He's busy with the development of this air starter unit that we've been telling you guys about. So uh, that's why I posted one of his development screenshots uh, a couple of lines higher. Yeah, but I am here. Yeah, I uh, said to the guys we can talk on text, and then obviously when you call me and you need me, then I'll talk here. Yeah. Uh, Cloudy said he will be tuning in on my stream for the landing and uh, then you guys can say hi and you know, just chat with him as well. Uh, George what happens is after the stream is finished and I click the end now button in my OBS software it takes Google approximately three hours or more sometimes to actually render the video and then put the comments in there so if you go to one of the previous uh, streams right now uh, you'll see all the comments but it takes like hours for uh, Google to actually catch up and put the whole package together you will also see that they only in that in that period you will only see the last two hours so if the stream is longer than two hours anything that happened prior to the two hours is cut off but once that period is finished the whole package is then available so you should be able to go back anytime and have a look Alright, so, uh, as a matter of interest, it never crosses my mind ever to only set up one of the nav radios. I always do two nav radios. So someone mentioned in the group during the week, they were struggling with auto landing and they never realized that they had to set up the nav uh, two uh, radio as well. Um, I apologize if any of you missed that, but I just do it normal standard that's where I was taught many many years ago already so I always make sure that both NAV radios and both of the course settings are actually set um, for me it's a standard thing and this is such a short flight I actually Got to do the level of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the uh, flight deck, we'd level off now at our cruising altitude. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fasten seatbelt sign. I'd like to quickly ask if you are staying in your seats to keep those seatbelts comfortably fastened for your safety. On board computer showing an on time arrival, no ATC delays either. We're going to stay quiet up here, have you enjoy the uh, flight and the service. Once again, welcome aboard.
Uh, good morning, PRM002. It's actually very easy. If you go below the video in the description, there is a link to my private hangar. If you go into the private hangar, you will choose Explain 11, and then you will look for the Zebo folder. And in the Zebo folder, you will see the actual uh, installation manual, and everything is in there. The whole setup, how you have to calibrate the Explain, how you have to calibrate the joysticks, everything is in there with my screenshots. So in one of my previous streams I was complaining I couldn't get the flyby to work again. You can press this button as much as you want and then I realized that's the trigger over there. If you click it there it actually works guys. So this is an X camera flyby obviously and it just works a little bit different. Uh, Martin yeah, it's because we're using biofuel nowadays. It's no longer the old kerosene of old, you know, we switched over. So I don't know what they put in the biofuel, but it comes with that. Ah, that must be Kilimanjaro over there. So that is the highest mountain in Africa. Let me know. Let's see if we can see it better. I must actually come and make some ortho for it as well. Yeah, it kind of does. Now imagine if we get that on also now.
Uh, I really don't want to go and disable uh, the LNAV now. Um, we're close enough. What we can do for a later stream is I'll make some also and then we come back and fly over it. Use some other aircraft and just come and play around it and see what it looks like. Nah, that could be a good idea. Hope, hope we can do that. Uh, there's no zoom level here. This is default explain. Uh, but I generally use zoom level 17. Hey George, you really want me to work for my money, eh? Um, I don't mind doing it, but in terms of doing a stream like that, that's way too much, you know. Guys lose interest, they come and they go, which I don't mind. Um, but it's not really good for a stream to fly all that long. Now that's a mini world tour.
folks from the uh, flight deck. We've suttered her descent. Should have you in the ground in about 15 minutes. Want to thank you so much for your company and business, and hope to see you again with us sometime very soon. Marius, ek stream gewoonlik op YouTube oor naweke. So is saterdag vir al specifiek 10 uur in die ochend Suid-Afrika tyd doen ek hierdie stream op YouTube en dan soos wat die gier my pak, die rest van die naweke sal ek so betek hier 1 of 2 extra strome doen, maar dan sit gewoonlik later in die aand, die weet so 6 uur, 7 uur in die aand en dan op sondag so 3 uur in die middag plus minus Dit is die gewone tye en dan die rest van die tyd is ek op Twitch Maar dit is ad hoc, jy weet dit gebeur wanneer die geer my pak Of as ek gauw iets hier moet doen en die As die bouwspan moet nou die video check of so iets Dan gaan neem ek het gauw daar op Die beste is subscribe op YouTube en Twitch En dan sit jy net die klokkie aan dat hy leie as ek aankom Martin There are tables, I just don't have tables for the auto brake. What I use is I actually uh, use Topcat uh, to do the landing calculations for me. And then I just work according to that. Now the reason I'm using uh, auto brake 2 right now is for high altitude and runway length obviously. And it just makes it easier to, to uh, land here. Um, like Mexico, like Johannesburg, a high altitude means um, uh, density altitude is affected. So depending on temperature and things like that, we can just adjust it. But for, for my calculations, I use Topcat.
you have to be you have to be this is this is awesome scenery this is really good scenery um, apart from the one hiccup i cannot fault this um, and as you can see we've entered the auto for xp area already so it's really looking good already and just gonna get better Landing, please. Twenty five hundred. That's me.
Okay, well that's a surprise guys. I'm gonna have to quickly make a plan here and save this flight. I did not realize that LNAV actually switched off there. I was concentrating on a whole bunch of other things and then my eye just caught it, it was off. Oh, well, that was not the prettiest landing, but I don't think it was that hard. Nobody's uh, teeth broken and other things, so we made it. And welcome to Nairobi, gentlemen. Yeah, I noticed flaps 15 too. Did you know the guys land flaps 15 here in Johannesburg on a hot day? I'm um, not sure if you know that. Ask Dean. don't know what they do in their uh, company, but uh, they told me that if it's uh, the density altitude is not right and if the temperature is no, funny, the guys land, <coughs> land flaps 15 easy, so um, that was my try for the team. Just after parking, I'm quickly going to do a bit of a replay then, then we can look at the scenery. Uh, I'm going to show it off a little bit, see if you guys also like it.
if you guys get this airport um, you're going to either see the terminal or you're not going to see the terminal the terminal was designed to run with uh, the world objects number uh, in your sliders and your graphics needs to be at high or higher so some of the guys actually said that they could get it working with a lower setting I couldn't uh, the moment I pulled my slider higher it all worked it just appeared so just as a matter of interest if you guys try the scenery and you don't see the terminal Right, so let's do a replay and see how embarrassing that landing was. Hey, Cloudy. Yeah, thanks. Welcome on stream. Thank you for watching the landing wasn't uh, one of the better ones, but I'll take it. Indeed, it was solid. It was a, a good landing, actually, in terms of that. I'm going to move to the side just now. I just want to get a, a reasonable spot to quickly go stand at. I love the detail the guy put into the stream. Ah, stream, yeah, into the scenery. Okay, Yoki, enjoy. We'll talk to you next time. not bad for the actual landing touchdown that was not bad uh, from this angle you're gonna see a nice bit of this scenery a lot of details gone in here thanks cloudy have fun talk to you soon I'll pop in again just now. This runway is actually much longer than I thought. Much, much longer. Much longer, wow. I 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream as well. Um, you were a bit quiet uh, this morning, as were I. Uh, lots of things happening behind the scenes. And what I would like to also do is uh, give you the link to the stream uh, where Cloudy is busy working on this air power unit. So I'd like to invite you guys over to come and see what he's doing and what you guys can expect from uh, Team Zebo in terms of this air power unit. Uh, that is the link that I've just posted in the description. So as I close my stream now, uh, you guys are more than welcome to come and join us on the other side. If you guys have time and you want to see the development happening, you're welcome. Marius, yeah, no, lots of good screenshots in this uh, situation. Yeah, wow. Um, I haven't actually taken that many this morning. I must actually take a couple while I'm still sitting here. Nice little float over there. Leaning off that speed and then touch down. Right there guys. Um, I'm going to switch this uh, stream off and move over to cloudy side. And I'll catch up with you later. I'm seriously looking forward to doing some more flights over this long weekend. So keep your eyes peeled and if you've got time it will be awesome to have you with me and then as always shoot the questions and we'll, we'll talk a bit. Thanks so much for being here today. Bye bye for now.